This program is weird, and the longer you look, the weirder it gets. But I promise it's just a Hello World program. All it does is print out a single line of text, Hello World. This definitely seems more complicated than most Hello World programs though, and there's clearly some shenanigans going on. For one thing, it has the text Hello World in three different places, even though it only prints one line. Let's look at how this program works, and why it is the way it is. If you know anything at all about programming, you probably know Hello World. It's almost always the first program that you'll write, or rather copy from a tutorial, when learning a new language. In most sane languages, printing Hello World is simple and can be done in a few lines of code. But it's clear that something a little bit less than sane is going on here. Now, I've got to admit, I lied just a bit a few seconds ago. This isn't a Hello World program, it's actually several Hello World programs. If you've run this program in C, C++, Python, or even open this file in your web browser, it'll print Hello World in all of them. This is a polyglot Hello World program, meaning that the exact same code works when compiled or interpreted by multiple different languages. Now, how the heck does this work? Well, let's look at what each different language actually sees when we try and run the program. When we run this program in Python, lines that begin with the pound sign indicate that the line is a comment and should be ignored. Python also supports multi-line strings, which are started and ended by placing three quotation marks in a row. So all these lines are not ignored by Python, but we're not doing anything with the value in the string, so Python sees it and is just like, cool, and moves on. That leaves us with just this print statement and this float1. Like the multi-line string, the float1 is an expression, but we're not doing anything with the value, so Python just discards it. The only thing that actually happens is this print hello world. Great, that was pretty straightforward. Now we're going to get a bit more cursed. Let's look at how this works from the perspective of C or C++. These are completely different languages with a whole different set of syntax from Python. And unlike Python, they're compiled languages, not interpreted, so we have some extra stuff going on. In C, when a line starts with a pound sign, it doesn't mean that it's a comment. Instead, it indicates that the line is a preprocessor directive, which tells C to do something special when compiling the program, before it actually runs. This includes standardio.h directive tells C to include a particular header file, standardio.h, which lets us use the function printf, so we can actually output the text, hello world. What about these other preprocessor directives, the lines that start with define? These are preprocessor macros. They tell C, whenever you see the first string, replace it with the second string. We're using this a couple of different ways. Define foo bar tells C to replace foo with bar, but we don't actually use foo, so in C this line effectively doesn't do anything. We'll come back to why we still need it in a minute, but first let's look at this other define, which does do something. Here we're telling C, whenever you see a function called float that takes in a parameter, replace it with this text. The text we want to replace it with, as it turns out, is an entire C hello world program on a single line. And on the next line, look, we have this float function. So, C replaces the line with the function we just said to use instead, and we end up with a hello world program. Now let's talk about all this stuff. This is actually pretty straightforward. In C, we have multi-line comments, and the slash star and star slash tell C that anything between them is a comment, not code, and should be completely ignored, as if it's not even there. So, after we define foo bar, our comment starts, and C ignores everything else until our comment ends, just before this include directive. You'll notice that the starts and stops for this multi-line comment are both on lines that start with a pound sign. This is important because Python does not use the same syntax as C for multi-line comments. These slash star and star slash would be syntax errors in Python if they were on lines by themselves. That's why we need this define foo bar at the top. We need to start a Python comment using a C preprocessor directive before we can use the syntax of C's comments, so that this can be valid C and valid Python. Okay, now let's get to the most cursed and overall questionable part. Whatever's going on here, inside the multi-line comment that we've skipped over so far. You're gonna hate this. You may notice that the section I haven't talked about yet looks an awful lot like a script tag in HTML. And that's because it is. But you must be thinking, this isn't a whole HTML page, surely this doesn't work if we open this file in a browser. And it works on every major browser out there. Now, this is not valid HTML5. The W3 validator gives us a total of 5 errors and a warning for good measure. But modern browsers are smart and very willing to put up with shenanigans, so as long as our file name ends with .html or the content type header says it's HTML, our browser will still do its best to try and figure out what the heck we're asking for and do it anyway. In this case, we end up with the full contents of the script tag executing. But one thing we have to keep in mind is the other text here. Even though it's not wrapped in any HTML tags, the browser will just treat this as text and spit it out onto the web page. 
So we get around that using the first line of our script tag, which sets display none for the whole document, so all this other junk disappears. Then we're left just with the alert hello world, which causes a pop-up window to appear with that text. I wrapped this inside a set timeout to add a small delay before the alert, because otherwise I found that sometimes the alert would appear before the document's text was hidden, which I don't want. So, that's the whole program. This is what I could come up with by myself, and I think I did okay. But, as with just about every thought I have on a planet of 8 billion people, several other people have already thought of this, as early as the 90s. There have even been a few code golf challenges for variations on a polyglot hello world, from 10 plus years ago. Let's look at some code golf submissions, and then steal some of their code to see how we can improve. Some of these are deeply, irredeemably cursed, and I highly recommend perusing these yourself. There's some really good stuff, or maybe bad stuff, but definitely interesting stuff here. After looking at a few of these, immediately I can see that I've been a bit silly with my choice of function that I'm replacing with the C macro. If we use print instead of float, we can take the Python print statement out of the C-style multiline comments, and just have it at the end, where C will replace it and Python will execute it. We can also just get rid of this multiline string entirely and move the HTML text inside it to the end of line 1. This way, it's still within the Python and C comments. Next, we can get our program to work with bash, which, like Python, uses pound signs to start comments. If we put an echo command and its arguments inside of double-quoted strings, bash will print this text. Then we immediately exit, so bash won't see the print statement later on, which prevents a syntax error. Python will also see the strings on this line, but because we aren't actually doing anything with them, it ignores them. I also learned that some languages I'm not familiar with, like Julia and R, have syntax similar to Python for printing. This CodeGolf solution is a bit cheeky, but hey, it technically works for a bunch of different languages, and we can get Ruby for free too. There are also plenty of esoteric languages we can add, like BrainFuck, that ignore everything except the characters they care about, so we can stick BrainFuck in a comment for free too. But we have to account for the brackets and period in the standard.io.h line, because these are characters that BrainFuck recognizes. When BrainFuck sees this line, it moves the pointer left, then prints a character, then moves right again. So on line 3, after we set up the exclamation mark, instead of outputting it, we just move right. Then on line 4, when we import standard.io.h, we move left, then finally output the exclamation mark. There's also a language called whitespace, which, as the name implies, considers only the whitespace in the file, tabs and spaces. We can stick a whitespace hello world program at the end of our current code without breaking anything else. Okay, after adding brainfuck and whitespace, this is at least 80% more cursed than it was before. This leaves us with a polyglot hello world program that works in at least 9 languages. I think that's about as good as we can reasonably do without getting into some really obscure languages. We could probably move things around a bit to get some more widely used ones too, but I like the variety of languages we have here. We've got a nice mix of compiled, interpreted, and scripting languages. But this whole concept of polyglot programs, is it actually useful? Well, this specific scenario, writing hello world programs in a bunch of different languages, definitely isn't. There are actual use cases for polyglot programs though. I stumbled across this really cool GitHub repo called Dino Guillotine, which is a sick name, and it inspired me to try this Hello World stuff out in the first place. It uses a polyglot shell script to create universal installers for Dino scripts that work on any platform. Links to this and all the other resources I showed in this video are in the description. Now what's the best you can do? How many languages can you cram into a single file? Leave a comment here or in my newly created Discord server, links in the description. Thanks again for watching my stuff. It's been surreal how quickly my channel's grown. I appreciate all the support, and I'll see you soon. Now, you may be thinking, that's cheating, the rest of the text is still there, you just can't see it. 